welcome back everybody it has been quite a while since I have recorded and I apologize for that I've been suffering massive fatigue for the past little while so I've been kind of out of commission um, had no real energy to do any kind of recording I apologize for that but it is what it is I'm slowly coming out of it now I think a lot of a lot of it is for me is switching from working at at in an office to working at home and I've got my office set up here at home now it's right next to me here um, it's my full editing station and everything it's just kind of I don't know it's it's weird to be to share my gaming space with my office space so I don't know I don't know how to explain it but anyway I've been just really fatigued lately so I haven't been doing really any recording I've been playing games and stuff but I just have had no energy to do any recording and like I said I think that I think it's having that separation of going into an office and going being in one mindset and then having a car ride home and being able to switch over to a different mindset when you come home but with everything set up at home it's there is none of that turn off turn on the different mindsets so it's I'm just, everything has just been kind of blurred together Plus, I'm a I'm a night owl, I'm, I'm a night owl, right? I, I love to be up at night, and without that structure of being able to go into the office every morning from nine to five, um, the going to bed early, the getting up early, and going to work, that whole routine has been thrown off. Now my body's fighting to try and stay up later and later and later, and I've been getting more and more exhausted. So that's kind of caught up to me. But you know, hopefully, you know, it's not this. Uh, self-isolation won't be going on until all summer hopefully we're back before that but we'll see how it goes I'm hoping everyone's staying safe and and doing their social distancing it's really important um, there's been some people that I know through six degrees of separation um, who have died from COVID so um, please stay safe please you know uh, practice your social distancing wash your hands reduce touching your face all that kind of stuff um, and one of the one of them uh, people that died was a uh, young baby uh, on the African continent, um, a newborn. So yeah, um, make sure you stay safe. Um, also, my wife's cousin might might have COVID, so there's that as well. So with that being said, hopefully uh, everybody's you know um, managing to to stay sane during these times. But anyway, uh, let's get into some combat. Um, going to show you the mech bay. I've decided that I'm going to switch to Osmium. Um, I know people have been saying to go ahead and do it. It's relatively stable now. And they're up to beta 1.6. They haven't implemented the vehicles yet, but I figure what we'll do before I... I, I'm still planning on doing that the, the full campaign series. Um, but before we do that, we'll get into Osmium. We'll start playing. And then once they introduce the vehicle play and all that kind of stuff, then, you know, once they break saves, then I'll, I'll jump in and and we'll get start start the comp the uh, the campaign, but for now we'll just jump into Osmium. So I'll probably only do a few more of these recordings um, with this version, and then I'll switch over. Uh, I'm I'm planning on saving this anyway. So I'll, if for whatever reason Osmium doesn't work out, I can always go back to this these uh, this install installation of Rogue Tech. So with that being said, um, we've got a couple of adjustments here. Now, like I said, it's been a while since I played. I know that Talos was sitting in the mech bay for a while, and I did a couple of things to this, I think. We stole the large X-Pulse, LRM-10, LRM-15, LRM ammo, Artemis ammo, because we have an Artemis system in here now, heat bank. I think everything pretty much still stayed the same on this guy, if I'm not mistaken. Tracker sensors... It looks like a dead fire. I'm okay. Yeah, I think so. And then um, when I log back in, the Urban Mech hadn't been completed repairing. Now, the Urban Mech Risk did have a, a rotary auto can on it, on it that survived with the ammo. So let's have a look at this thing. So I, I went back and forth trying to figure out what I was going to do with this. It's kind of a difficult build because obviously it's 30 tons. You want to put a lot of firepower on it. Um, it is slow, um, but it's a risk build. So we got the fire control system risk here, which gives us plus one ig evasion ignore, which is really nice. Uh, range finder, I dropped in. You get a bit more increase in sight because it's going to be slow. Hopefully you'll be able to see more, more things at distances. I know 20 base sight isn't much, but hopefully we can find a, uh, a range finder that's 80 base sight. That'll be great. This also gives it uh, plus one to gunnery. 
got clan sensors in here to increase the sensor range on it now uh, someone had mentioned to me about the ECM and stuff like that in the comment section not understanding fully how they work now I don't have a full comprehensive understanding of how ECM work uh, and it, it can be confusing so cockpit sensor suite here on this the sensors stacking bonus of two to sensor checks made by this unit right that's basically just to see the enemy on the map right and the ECM will reduce that chance. So the more sensor check chances you have, the better chance you have of detecting a unit, right? Um, so, and this uh, um, sensor, uh, sorry, provides additional sensor information. So the closer the enemy is, the more weapons you can see. Um, the, like some of the, like if you notice when we're, when we're fighting some mechs, some mechs you, we don't even know what, they're, what they have in the loadout wise. Sometimes we have a, just a general idea, like ballistic or laser. Then other times it tells you exactly what they are. So the better your sensor check, the more accurate information you will get. So there's no uh, um, ECM on this guy, but uh, I was I actually tried to get a build um, with the ECM built in, and I had it set up with a large heavy on this arm and a medium range 10 on this arm, um, but because I can't run with just the risk on this. The thing, the problem with running with there's just a rotary AC2 on this and it's being risk is, is a good chance that this is going to jam at some point. Um, and when it jams, we got nothing to fire. But at least with this, the large he uh, improved heavy laser on this arm, um, we've got some heavy pinpoint damage we can be fired. And we can fire both these at the same time because our heat efficiency is actually really good on this. Um, so we're going to be firing both of these, and when the rotary is down, we still have this heavy pinpoint accuracy. Now, I thought about throwing the uh, heavy MRM on. We do have one, but the only ammo we have for that right now is the uh, heavy MRM swarm. We do have a heavy, heavy MRM 10. So the swarm is actually not that bad, but, you know, it's not going to be all that often that we're going to have enemies clustered together. So this is we're not going to get a lot of bang for our buck out of that, even though it is very light. Um, the damage is really low on this, and yes, it'll do area effect damage, but, you know, if we're only hitting one mech, it's kind of a waste. So, it, once we can find better ammo, I'll definitely be dropping the heavy MRM in. Um, but for now, we'll run this way. So, um, yeah, so let's talk about stealth a little bit. Uh, let's go to uh, Gauntlet. Let's have a look. What do we have on this guy? Actually, let's go to... I'm just going to do this real quick, guys. Sorry. Uh, Talos here. Because we got the Nova CEWS on this, and that kind of gives you a good idea here. So the Nova CEWS plus 10% sensor range, plus 10% sight range. Obviously, when you're in sight range, um, you're going to have a better chance to hit because you can visually see them, right? So you want to have as you know the best sight range as you possibly can. Sensor range you also want to have because if they're outside your sensor range, they're not going to be on your map. Right, so you want to make sure you can at least get your sensors on them, so at least you can fire at them. Uh, resolve gain is obvious. C3 network unit makes enemies easier to spot by one in aura range. So if they're inside your aura range, it gives you an easier chance to uh, to target them. Um, increases ally sensors by one in aura range. So if if um, you have a mech with inside your aura range, your your allies' sensors go up by one, so they have a better chance of spotting the enemy. Especially if they're if they're farther away, they'll have a good chance of, of spotting the enemy. Um, see, uh, sorry, requires target within 300 meters, green circle. So anything within 300 meters, the C3 picks it up. Obviously, ECM uh, debuffs enemy within 300 meters. So if an enemy is within 300 meters of your mech, it's going to jam them. Uh, gives them minus one accuracy when they're in in that range, right? With the ECM. Um, grants one CM ECM field to everyone in range. So if you're if you have um, uh, other mechs with you that have uh, ECMs on them already, this is going to give them a bonus of one ECM. If I'm correct at reading this, so um, even if you have like with this particular ECM, like normally ECMs don't stack. It's whatever ECM is the highest ECM. Uh, so if you have four mechs all with ECM, one of them has got ECM of two, the other ones have ECM of one. The two counts for all of the mechs inside of the two circle. Um, and this will add one to that, so it'll be three then at that point. Um, so ECM jammer reduces enemy sensor checks by two in range. So if an enemy is within range of this mech, so if it's inside the blue circle and it's trying to detect... Um, 
your uh, lance mates, it's going to have uh, its sensor checks reduced by two. So it'll be harder for them to spot your other lance mates, uh, which is a bonus. So if you've got this on a, on a mech that's close in, it's going to add bonus targeting for everybody in your lance, right? Because um, it's increasing their sensor checks and then it's going to decrease the enemy's sensor checks so that they probably won't be able to spot the rest of your lance if they're at distance. Um, you can toggle ECCM on and off. Um, ECCM reduces enemy ECM by three, so if the enemy is running ECM, which is causing it hard for your sensors to lock on, this guy can pop in, throw the ECCM on, and wipe that out, which is will give it basically um, your la whole lance a better chance to hit. It's got a 280 meter range, which is nice. It's a purple circle, so you can turn that on and off, uh, and it shares sensors information and it removes the fog of war around their vision when a lance member moves. So when a lance member is moving, if this guy's like, normally when you're moving, you can't see what your fellow lance mates see. This allows you to do that, which is kind of nice. Um, so yeah, the way that ECM works, is basically just defeating sensor checks, right? Your sense, the, the higher, the better, from what I understand, the better your sensor checks, the better chance you have to hit. So if an enemy is stealth and you're able to defeat the stealth by, by detecting them, you'll have a better chance to hit. Now, if, the, if that fails, then their ECM, whatever their ECM rating is, um, will be uh, a negative for you to hit. So if you have, for instance, if you're having a really hard time hitting a mech across a map board, yeah, part of it's because you're only getting, barely, you're barely getting any sensors on him, so you kind of know where he is. You know he's there, but you don't know exactly where he is, so you're just basically firing blind, right? Um, but if you have an enemy with stealth armor and they're moving very slowly, most stealth armor, the slower you move, the more the more difficult it is for your sensors to lock on to be able to target them correctly. So the farther are the farther they are away and the slower a stealth opponent is moving, the much more difficult it will be for you to lock on. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's it, it's really weird. I when I'm playing, um, I like to have all my mechs with ECM. Um, yes, you could just run with one if you wanted to and have everybody clustered together, but the last thing you want is, you know, and you've seen it with me, you don't want to be clustered together. You want to be able to spread out because, you know, later on in the game, when you're dealing with artillery and arrow systems and stuff like that, the more clustered you are, the worse it's going to be for you. So if everybody's running their own ECM suite, then they can operate on their own and be the best off that they could possibly be. Plus, if your one unit that's running the heavy ECM gets wiped out, the rest of your guys will be screwed if they don't have ECM, right? So you want to make sure everyone's got at least something. Um, now, at lower levels, that's not always possible because you're not always going to be picking ECMs up that quickly. But once you do, it's nice to try and work them in. And you can get regular Guardian ECM, like um, if we go to equipment here. So, the you know, uh, the regular ECMs, I think it's a ton and a half or one ton. For basic ECM, the Guardian ECM, which adds a plus one defense, which is even better because it makes it harder for you to be hit, is one and a half tons. And that's, even for a mech at this weight, like at 30 tons or 25 tons, um, that's still not that bad. You're basically dropping a medium laser, right? So, but for the chance of not being hit, um, that's great. And this Guardian ECM reduces uh, enemy ECM by five. Like, that's like that's huge, right? So it definitely makes, it, when you're in close, it makes their ability to jam you a lot more difficult, right? So, you know, once again, it's just a, it's a, just a matter of reading. Obviously, the higher numbers that you have on these things, the better off it's going to be, right? The more uh, sensor checks you can get, um, or the more sensor checks that you can reduce an enemy by, the better off you're going to be. Uh, now, I don't really mess around with ECCM um, because that would mean that the mech that's in close who's use, running the ECCM to jam the other guy's ECMs is now open for attack. And when you're on a map board with 20 mechs, you're facing 20 mechs, it can be really difficult to run that properly. So, I mean, if you have a jump-capable mech that can jump in and be hidden and run that, great. Um, but like I said, it's really difficult to do that. You want to... For me, it's all about defense, about preventing be yourself from being hit. And then as long as you have the proper loadouts, you can rip your enemies apart. That's the way I run. The the with the way that it is now with a sheer number of mechs on the board, if you're facing four against eight or four against four, then it's a little bit more feasible. But when you're running eight mechs and you're facing like, you know, 20, 25 mechs, 
it's just not possible because as soon as you move in and they, they see you, you're done, right? They'll just tear you to shreds. So you just have to be very careful about that. Anyway, that's kind of a rough little bit on ECM. Now let's jump into the combat here because I know we're all here for combat, most of us anyway. Uh, so let's go to the command center. I know what mission we're going to take today. We're going to go right down here to cease and desist. We need to get the... Um, I want to at least try and run the Kentaro before I um, end this series and move into Osmia. So probably, like I said, a few more episodes. So we, we want to get as much, as much sea builds as we possibly can. Uh, we're going to run cease and desist, and we're going to get negotiate this. We're going to go full salvage only because we can probably get more sea builds. Like if we go this route, 889,000 is not that bad. Um, but if we go this route, right, we're dropping, what, 650,000 roughly um, which we can make up easily enough with salvage so we're going to go ahead and go this route let's accept this and I'm going to pull out because we're doing a base destruction the trebuchet is going to come out and we're going to bring the risk Irby in I think I'm going to give that to witness though we'll let uh, take dust Ricker out bring GV in let him run the gauntlet um, I think that's what we'll do yeah, we want the higher piloting on the gauntlet because the gauntlet's a little faster. And he's got a little bit better tactics for um, called shot, which I want to think I want to use more with the rack and the um, heavy improved laser. So let's go this route and see how we do. Command interface initiated. Okay, here we go. Looks like we got enemy contact right away and we do have a lance with us. I really hope they make that an option. I don't know if that is an option in, in Osmium yet, but um, it would be nice to have that little checkbox in the corner that says, yes, drop with support, no, don't drop with support, and have the have the support cost you a little bit, you know? So if you're new to the game and you need the support, you can put a check mark on and hopefully get some support. We've got a Valkyrie, a Condor, a cargo truck with a mortar. Okay, that's kind of not bad. And what what else do we have? What's this guy in here? I don't know. He's like sitting right on top of us here. I have no idea. He's like right in my crotch. What is this thing? Stinger? Looks like a mini griffin, so it could be a, it could be a wasp. Yeah, it could be a wasp. Okay. Uh, no big deal. Now, um, let's get moving up here. So you noticed all the blue circles here. Those are all the ECMs, right? Obviously, the best ECM is what we're going to be um, yep. using the most. Now... I'm going to move in and brace here. Because we're going to have turrets. So, uh, and I can't see anything yet. Okay. So this will probably be four turrets, a main lance of five, and then a secondary lance will probably show up part way through. Oh, somebody's destroying buildings for us already. Got somebody coming through here. Nope. Well, I thought it was, but it's not. It's just the spores. Yeah, the spores, it's not bad. It gives you, you know, it makes you harder to hit, but then it also when you get hit, you get hit harder. So I just avoid them at all cost. Um, let's get into here. All right, we got line on. Let's get our this thing on overload, please, so I don't forget. What do we got down here? Piranha. Uh, looks like he's probably moved already. I'm going to leave the rocket off. Uh, let's leave the tag off, because I want to use that on the um, turrets. So let's just open them up with, them with, with this stuff. Nice. Solid hits. Valkyrie. Yeah, I'm finding the AI is a little better um, than it was in earlier versions. Oh, yeah, man, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. What can I, do for you? I won't say no to that. All right, so this is our risk, Irby. That's our walk. It's not walking very far. Let's get up over here. Turbo. Sprint it out, buddy. What do we got here? Valkyrie, okay. It's still... He still goes before... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the leader. Oh, that's fine. We got to sprint the Talos too, I think. 
Um, they got turrets to go still. So let's just move into here. If we see something great, if we don't, well, we're okay with that. Yeah, we're okay. All right. Uh, shooting on the cargo truck already. Okay, there's our turret. Looks like they're half... Is that a, a ventilator? Jenner, cool. Streak LRM turret. All right, now this... Probably heavy machine guns, most likely. Going by the name. Uh, we want to get up here. No, is that cresting the hill? It's not. Okay, I want to avoid cresting the hill at all costs because there's a turret right here and a turret I think back in this corner there's one right here too but I don't want to I want to engage the first two turrets first before letting the other two turrets see, see me directly oh we can see this guy directly it's a little farther up than I thought standard turret chassis doesn't say what's in it two energy two energy all right um, regular Jenner cicada um, I want to knock this turret out. Will we have enough to knock the turret out? There's the question. Um, what if we switch? Still the same, eh? All right, let's just go on this, guys. See if we can do some good damage to this turret. Hopefully we knock it out, but it's unlikely. All right, one heavy hits. Eh, not enough to pen. Okay. Want to make sure those streaks are gone. It didn't look like very many missiles hit this guy. So they could be streak 10s. Or 15s. Yeah, don't. Okay. As long as they can see you and not me. So we do have our barrages, which we're going to use on these buildings. Large buildings, though, eh? Large and medium. Small. We'll target the this front corner here, I think. We should probably be able to do a fair bit of damage. All right, well, let's see how this guy shreds. I'm going to walk it into here. Interested to see what our chances to hit are with this thing. All right, not that bad. A lot better on this guy. Um, we wind it right up. Let's go to four... Try and keep it from jamming early. The big one hit. That's all I really care about. I don't know. He might not want it anymore. So you can see there where he says jammer affected. He's in jamming range. It looks like of three people. So whatever the highest jamming chance is, is what he's going to take. Okay, let's get into here. Um, we got time. So I think I'm going to do a multi-target here. We're going to go after this and this guy. And A will take the X-Pulse. And B will take those. So And the, and the Barrage. We're going to fire the Barrage on this one. Because it'll hit three mechs. Turret's almost gone. Alright, not quite enough. But it was enough for that guy, I think. Nope, not enough for that guy either. Beautiful shot with the barrage. Man, I've seen some some of the... Uh, I'm not sure what the, the gentleman's name is. Um, because... Um, 
he's Russian and it's of course I think it's Cyrillic characters the Russian characters so I don't know how to pronounce his name the guy the gentleman that's working on um, doing the vehicle mod and stuff uh, I've seen some of his uh, videos that he's posted man cool stuff really cool stuff the fact that um, and I, I know I mentioned this a long time ago and I'm sure other people have mentioned it too um, having dedicated lances fixed in and staying fixed in so you can have like lance one lance two lance three and you can cycle between them and when you drop and come back they they stay already set the different lances already stay set which is really cool uh, let's get into here it just makes selecting things for mi like multiple missions a lot better all right let's go with where we got this guy in range of the merms it's got two energy weapons they could be PPCs or large lasers or something I think what I want to do though I think I'm gonna do the same thing here we're gonna do a multi-target okay so B will be the arrow because it'll splash onto A and C a will take the MRM. Oh, I guess it has to take those. We'll put C and C. Uh, how badly is C damage is really bad. So let's put this back onto, oops, onto A. Yeah, let's go this way. Multiple targets confirmed. All right, one hit. Tag hit, nice. And there's a kill there, beautiful. Enemy down. So their whole left side now has been completely punished. All right, beautiful. I don't even know where you hit, buddy. Oh, dude, don't shoot at me. Well, that was the turret. No, they're heavy lasers. What do you need? I need to kill a turret if you can get in there. Let's just shoot up this, uh, I don't know, this one? We've only got, okay. How are we doing heat-wise? Let's just go this route. Put the risk LRMs on this turret. Then we're going to back up. We're going to pull back to here. Oh, they both jam too. Ah, oh, crap. All right, well. Fair enough. I want to try and keep me myself from engaging these two turrets just yet until this side's done should be able to finish this side this turn then we'll engage these two turrets next there's no point in uh, being shot at by these guys if we can avoid it now we've killed one two there should be one more mech. I think normally he starts back here, but it's chugging, so it's thinking about something. Yeah, we've killed 40% already, so there's one more guy somewhere. Could be a chopper. Oh, ventilator just sitting still. Okay. Yeah, I hope um, one of the things they should work on is um, risk factor. Like how ballsy a pilot would be to continue moving even though they're unstable or overheating. I hear uh, let's go in the turret. You got the range for this. And we'll leave it at four. Four hits, the large misses, but that's fine. Another hit like that, you're Still 100 damage. Back up this way. Received. 
Yes, because I mean, a lot of these mechs like this guy here, he's basically committing suicide by not moving, right? Like he's just increasing our chance to hit him. How's this guy doing armor-wise? Not that bad. Oh, he's got just regular machine guns. Two medium heavies. It's not that bad. Not a bad loadout. It's not good enough. It's got to get close. You'd think, though, for a base like this, that's not the kind of mech that you would want to have in place. Oh, it's an adder. Okay. Okay, it's probably got an LBX-5 on him. Alright, we're in range of this guy with two things. So let's multi-target this. You and you. And, yep, we'll fire. Okay, that's not bad. The LBX hit, which is the most important thing. Yeah, we'll back up. That's fine. On my way. Okay, that's the turret firing at us. Guy's got balls, I'll give him that. Moving in. Well, I got a lot of people. Got a lot of people. All right, GV. Um, yeah, let's finish them off. Basically committed suicide, and that's fine. Committed suicide for his teammates. Let's not get in there. Let's get into here, staying in the trees. We're going to crest that hill in a minute. Let's get up over here. If we can get uh, Witness and Arc, well, Arclight's missing the two uh, MMLs though. She's down those. I was going to say if we can get them to kill the turrets, or to kill the one turret here, I'll crest with my uh, Talos and attack these two. I think that Cicada's got to go. Ooh. It's got a PPC, man. Yep. New target. Let's get rid of this guy. Okay, firing. Alright, one hit, not bad. Take it. Oh, looks like something got on... What did you get one of our... Launchers get unjammed? I have no idea. Okay, we got... He goes on 15 now. Yeah, as you can see, the more guys that have moved away, the you? less um, sensors we have on. Shit, can't see anybody. All right, brace it up. See if we can see that turret. There we go. Did we get it back? No, we did not. Because of course we didn't. Well, There we go. 29, 35, let's drop it on this turret. Our barrage should be back in a second. There's that turret. It's nice that when they fire now they become visible. Although he just disappeared again. <laughs> 
It's all yours, buddy. Um, yeah, mess him up if you can. I think you did too. Let's get back over here. I'm going. Everybody's still under AMS. Beautiful. We got sensors back now. Come on. gonna back up are you no point participating in the battle at all he's all yours buddy it's all yours what do you need? yeah we got our uh, MMLs back let's go straight to SRM we're just gonna use the regular ammo because this guy's shredded already You get for flanking by yourself. That's what you call flank and get spanked. Eh, at least you tried. At least you tried. I hear you. Like I said, dude's all yours. Ooh, maybe not. Let's shoot the turret instead. See if we can get rid of it. Oh yeah, the big hit. And three smalls, nice. Yeah, critical hit. You got that right. Just back it up a little bit. Right, Doesn't have much left, so let's multi-target this. Large X pulse on B. Uh, really, huh? Not bad. All right, let's go this route. Engaging All right, 15 was enough. I was worried it wasn't going to be enough there. Oh, the big one hit. Nice. Nice when that happens. Back it up again. Keep the direct fire from those turrets off us until we can crush the hill and kill them both. These guys would engage. Oh, Christ's sake. I'm here. All right. I'm done waiting. Acknowledge. You guys know me. It's, it's how I, it's how I do. I'm just done waiting. All right, rockets up, arrows up. Firing on this guy. Large heavy laser. That's kind of a bizarre combination large heavy and a chem laser Cobra I'm out of long -range missiles. yeah you good actually can we get away from the oh, we can't get away from the outer Let's just stay in the trees here then Confirm. all right we're gonna stay with the serms uh, and try for the kill on this guy we should get it though Okay, one of the heavies hit. Ooh, not quite enough. Nice. Got past the armor. Waiting on you, Commander. Pedal to the metal. Alright, let's see what our chances to hit are here. Glad that risk hasn't jammed yet. 54 on this guy. 66 on this guy. And the same on this turret. That guy's almost done. Let's just kill this turret. Oh, not quite enough. There's more where that came from. Not quite enough. Not bad for a 30 ton urban mech. Pinpoint 80 damage and 4 times 25. That's pretty good. It's 180 damage if everything hits. Upper leg destroyed. He's nice and slow now. We've got a pair of rocket packs still, which we can use on this turret here. We might be able to kill both these turrets if 
I wasn't so damn slow. Yeah, using LBX. Scatter shot. Yeah, I'll be in the open. Let's get in the open. No pain, no gain. All right, uh, this guy's almost done, so we're gonna do a multi here. A and B, 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 A. I'm gonna leave the barrage because I want to use it on the buildings here. And uh, let's hammer them. Okay, that one's gone. All right, the big one hit, beautiful. Yes. I love it when a plan comes together. So we might not get reinforcements on this one. Friggin' dude shooting himself back here. Alright GB, hammer this guy please. And firing. Ooh. See ya. That's what you call pain. I hear ya. You have elected the way of pain. Medium reinforced. Medium. 200 hit points, eh? 120, 200 if we hit with everything. Eh, we're not going to hit with everything. So let's go after a medium. Enemy structure is weakening. Enemy structure eliminated. Looks like we missed with one. <laughs> what can I do for you? Okay, get in the open. On my way. This is a little better chance to hit. Uh... Medium building a hundred. That should we should easily be able to do that. Is there one fifty here? Doesn't look that way. All right, let's go up to this building. Nice. You sure did. Okay, let's get into here. Get that barrage up. Gonna go after the large building. And firing. There you go. Six out of four. Alright, no re no reserve lands. Beautiful. Okay, here we go. Increase salvage by 35%. Nice. Mostly it's gonna cover our drop and any damage, no problem. Um kills. Ah, not bad. Gauntlet got a lot of kills, mech kills. But that MRM-20, that, that thing is like a killer. It's a beast, man. Large heavy, that's the... Yeah. yeah it's unfortunate we're not going to get to use any of this stuff. Like, it'd be nice to be able... To, like, I'm really... Like, the next series, we're going to be using all... Like, as much as I can get to use... We're going to be using stuff, so the fire control system, machine guns, things like that, whatever we can get. I want to try and use as much of the stuff as we can get. Uh, Watchdog Suite's worth how much? Over a million. I wish there was just a button that you could click on that's, that says select the the, uh, the most expensive salvage. That would be nice. But can't have everything. That's worth a million. But not really a million, 130,000. I don't know what the salvage on these guys is. Adder salvage is pretty good, actually, because it's a clan mech. It's an Omni. Um, so let's take these. Prana and Ventilator, Heavy Machine Gun, Large Pulse Clan. I think we got three of these now, don't we? No, we don't have any. Okay, I think I sold mine because we weren't using them. Enhanced Imaging. All right, that's actually pretty good. Upper Recoil. All right. 
16,000 in repairs so not too bad a couple of days that should oh, we got our, we don't have our pallets back so gonna have to sell a few things for the end of the month and what we'll do is we'll bring out the um, I'll switch over before the next episode the um, trebuchet and the um, um, Kintaro. Kintaro is going to become the melee mech and the trebuchet will most likely be the lamb mech uh, and we'll try and get those into the next episode so I'm going to sell a bunch of mech parts like I said this series is slowly winding down now because we're going to be switching to osmium so uh, over the next little bit anyway hopefully by next week we'll we'll be into osmium um, so yeah I'll uh, switch some stuff over so we can see what those other mechs are going to look like and uh, we'll give them a run to see how they they operate all right uh, so I'm gonna end this episode here guys. I hope you enjoyed it If you did drop a like if you haven't subscribed, please repeat to subscribe You can also drop any comments in the comment section down below until next time. We'll see you later